Hi! In today's lecture, we're going to look at Latimer diagrams. We are going to define what Latimer diagrams are and what pieces of information we can get by just looking at these Latimer diagrams. Let's begin! Here you have reactions of different manganese species in one molar acid solution. You can see that all of these reactions are reduction reactions and you have the corresponding standard reduction potential along with it. And the manganese species here are of different oxidation states. So can we determine by just looking at these reactions which manganese species are stable, which are not stable in acidic solution? And with the help of the Latimer diagrams, you can have a better representation of the electrochemical reactions undergone by substances with different oxidation states. So, if you're constructing a Latimer diagram, or if you look, if you are looking at a Latimer diagram, the first thing that you'll notice is that Latimer diagrams are created at specific pH values. In this case, we are going to look at the Latimer diagram for manganese species at pH equals zero. So it is under acidic conditions. You can also have a Latimer diagram under basic conditions, and that is pH equals fourteen. The species are arranged in decreasing oxidation number. So you can see from this, this is the actual Latimer diagram for the different manganese species. You see here that you have your permanganate in the plus 7 all the way up to the elemental manganese with a zero oxidation state. And then you have the numbers here which correspond to the standard deduction potential of the given species written beside it. So essentially, these are shorthand forms of your redox reactions. So example, if you have your MnO4 minus plus electron to produce your MnO4 2 minus, then it has a standard reduction potential of plus 0.56 volt, which is this one. And using the Latimer diagram, so you can predict uh, some redox behavior of a given substance. And you may want to recall your disproportionation reaction. So when we say disproportionation reaction, it is a reaction wherein a species undergoes simultaneous oxidation and reduction reaction, such as this one. You have an example here, MnO4 3 minus. So this is MnO4 3 minus with manganese in the plus 5 oxidation state. And then it is converted to MnO4 2 minus, which is plus 6, and MnO2, where in your manganese is in the plus 4 state. Note that this reaction and this reaction are not balanced. Okay? So how do we know that this disproportionation reaction is spontaneous? Well, we can look at the potential using the Latimer diagram for the substance that undergoes disproportionation reaction. In this case, that is MnO4 3 minus. And you need to look at the reduction potential to its right and the standard reduction potential to its left. If the standard reduction potential to its right is greater than the standard reduction potential to its left, then that means that particular substance is unstable and will undergo disproportionation spontaneously. So if you have MnO4 3 minus, the standard reduction potential to its right is plus 4.27, and the standard reduction potential to its left is plus 0.27. So this means MnO4 3 minus will undergo disproportionation reaction. Now, by inspecting the Latimer diagram, can you identify other manganese species that will spontaneously disproportionate? So, you can see, by comparing, by comparing, you see here that MN3+, plus in the form of the hexa-aqua complex, will undergo disproportionation reaction to form MN2+, plus here, again, in the form of the hexa-aqua complex, and MnO2, wherein manganese here is in the plus 4 oxidation state. And this is because the potential to its right 
is greater than the potential to its left. So that will give you a spontaneous disproportionation reaction. Now, how about MnO4 2 minus? This one. Will it undergo disproportionation? Yes or no?